I'm thrilled to introduce our next speaker, uh, Eric Wan. Eric has been part of the Holland Bloorview family for the past six years, and many of us who have had the opportunity to interact with Eric. So many of us who have had the opportunity to interact with Eric have, have really been inspired by him. Eric has taught us to appreciate the, the meaning of the moment and has challenged us to give when we feel that there's nothing left to give. Um, Eric has had an illustrious research career. He's featured frequently in the media. He's won awards locally and internationally. And when the Globe and Mail asked me uh, last year to identify uh, the next generation of transformational leaders, I immediately thought of Eric. Eric played on stage last year with the Montreal Symphony Orchestra um, with the virtual music instrument. So please welcome a brilliant en engineer and a hardworking graduate student, the one and only Eric Wan. Good morning, everyone. So um, this is a project that I've been working on for the past two years, uh, titled Automatic Detection of uh, Selective Auditory Attention via Transient Evoked Autoacoustic Emissions. In the 2006 survey, some 84,000 Canadian children were uh, reported to have severe disabilities and a large number of them face challenges in communication and uh, control of their surrounding environment due to verbal and motor impairments. So um, uh, communication devices and uh, computer user interfaces are some of the examples as engineered solutions that can help uh, re enable children um, to be able to communicate with others. Now, however, these systems require some sort of input uh, for the control of the systems. And um, some examples are voice control, touch, and uh, mechanical switches. However, when um, conventional means failed, um, uh, they will have to look into the other types of uh, input methods. Uh, so for example, looking into detection of mental activity uh, via men, the brain signals. Uh, the challenge here is though that um, not all children are able to uh, make use of these the technologies to be able to detect um, the mental activities that um, they can they can elicit. So uh, there then a need for con continuous development for innovative design for uh, um, alternative access. So the project that I've been working on makes use of uh, auditory attention as a way to control a single switch access. The way it works is as follows. A nerve fiber in the brain called olivocochlear bundle, which originates in the superior olivary complex and synapses the outer air cell. When a sound is introduced into the ear, it activates the olivocochlear bundle. Its neural activity travels across the brain to the opposite side and it can be detected uh, in the opposite ear. Uh, for auditory attention, either directed to the sound or away from the sound, the attention is mainly processed in the auditory cortex. Some of its activity is mediated in the descending pathway via the olivocochlear bundle, and it can be detected with the technology called transient evoked autoacoustic emission. Transient evoked autoacoustic emission, or TEOAE, 
is sound that is generated in the inner ear. Its intru- instrumentation consists of a probe that embeds a microphone and a speaker, where the probe elicits cochlear response and can be in turn uh, be sensed by the uh, microphone in the TEOAE probe. So the th- system that we have designed that uh, uses a sound on one uh, uh, on the user on one side, then TEOAE sensor on the other side. Intention can be picked up by the TEOAE sensor in form of ear sounds, and this ear sound in turn can be that uh, uh, goes through signal processing algorithm and uh, can be translated into control signals. So uh, auditory attention directed to the sound is then translated into an audio switch and lack of attention to the sound uh, can be translated into an off switch. An example of use, uh, the use of the system is that uh, um, the user remains in rest state um, as long as the, the user is not intending to activate a switch. In a scan type of uh, display system, the user can then wait till uh, the desired response and um, during the response, he directs that attention to the sound, activates the switch, and the response is chosen. So this system has been tested in a research study. 13 participants completed the research study, uh, where all of them have normal hearing threshold, normal middle ear functions, and normal or corrected to normal, normal uh, vision. In the data collection session, 30 attentive and 30 non-attentive periods were performed on each participant, and TEOAEs were recorded. So for the results, the system was able to detect auditory attention at approximately 70% of the time. This is the level of accuracy that is required for effective communication. as stated in past literature. So uh, some of the advantages of uh, TEOAE based access uh, pathways uh, is its portability and um, simple sensor setup. But uh, what's particularly interesting about um, uh, this type of design is the, the potential use as a multiple switch access. So um, attention to sound can affect cochlear response in a very frequency specific way. So if we introduce more than one type of sound, then that um, allows the user to choose from one of several sounds. And in turn, um, the TEOAE signal uh, can be used to differentiate between um, uh, attention to the different types of sound. However, a a large limitation of this system is its susceptibility to background noise. So then this system has to be used in a relatively quiet environment. In the future, the signal processing algorithm can be used to either enhance the signal or remove background noise. So then um, uh, it can be potentially used uh, in a more of a normal environment. So now we have an initial design for detecting auditory attention using TEOAE at an accuracy that is um, at an accuracy that is uh, good for effective communication. And um, with this technology, now we then can uh, replace a conventional uh, switch method, and we can use it for um, uh, input to communication devices.
Thank you very much.